It's the mess, the drama, and the confrontation that left everyone questioning the integrity of our favorite Queen Bona Mateba. This is Timoney. We are back with review of season two of The Young, Famous, and African episode three. A lot has happened on this scene. Sit down and relax. I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to give you all the good stuff that happened on the episode three of Young, Famous, and African. First of all, I'm not going to waste time. We're going to get right into this video without wasting no time. As you've seen on episode two, they were trying to have this intervention where they wanted to bring everybody that had issues. At the party, y'all remember that Kanye started calling everyone F you, F that, F that, and Angela did not take that really well. Angela decided that this is not my space. I'm not supposed to be here. I got to get out of here before I say something bad. So what he decided to do was leave the room because you know what? He was like, I'm going to be a gentleman today. I'm not going to behave like a hooligan. I'm just going to get out of here peacefully and vamos with peace okay so we've seen him walking out of the party it was actually towards the end of the party when he decided to leave because the f you word started being thrown out by kanye towards the end of the party we also see zari spilling the news to kaylee uh, about two baba having the kids you know the sixth child i'm like lady why are you discussing this with this lady you know one thing that I know is uh, Kaylee, like, I, I don't know. I feel like Kaylee, you know, she likes drama. She doesn't like drama. She likes being part of the conversation, but she always wants to step back. Drama always follows her, okay? On another scene, we see Kanye. I feel like within the group, you are the closest person to them. And for you to call any to discuss these things on podcast, it wasn't a good idea. Any is here to clear the rumors and make sure that people really understand what is going on. So she pretty much says that the whole baby rumor is actually based on very old allegations that this random lady had made about uh, Innocent. She was clarifying that people don't want to listen. They just go with whatever they hear on the media. This is the old, old story that this lady has you know that has, it has never changed this lady keeps coming up with these rumors every year so is does she get pregnant every year that's one thing that we want to know but one thing that she wanted us to know was that was a lie the lady is some random ass fan who has no life who is out here claiming that she's expecting the baby with a two baba pretty much saying that this lady is, is expecting every month every year this lady is expecting the same baby. The rumors are from five years ago. You know, she was really sad about the whole situation. The situation started getting really emotional. But, you know, she clarified that for people to kind of understand and know what's really going on. That the husband is not cheating. But we see you. We see you. We can tell that something is going on. You just don't want to say it. And Andile was actually saying that she does not know what to believe. She, that she feels like you are not disclosing some of the information that is very crucial to help you heal from these rumors that are out here. On another scene, Diamond invites Fantana to his house. Then it finally happened. You know, Fantana always knew what she wanted. She actually came in wearing a dress that has a split all the way up to the waist. And she did say, she was like, you know, I, I did it on purpose. I came wearing a dress because I wanted to seduce him. And then she came in, you know, they were vibing, they were talking about you know, having a good time, making music and all of that. And, you know, the conversation ended up going upstairs where they had whatever they had going on. So um, it looks like they ended up having the good time upstairs. Okay. I guess that's what she wanted and then she got it. On another scene, Quentin, Andele and Luis meet up at the basketball court. I'm like, why not soccer? Y'all can't even hoop. Anyway, they meet up over there and Swanky actually joins them a little bit later. It was so funny when Quentin says that I don't understand what's going on. Is Paris meets uh, Nigeria, meets Lesotho because he came wearing a blanket. It didn't look like um, you're coming for a basketball match. But you already know Swanky. Swanky always wants to make a statement everywhere he goes. So they start talking about Fantana and Swanky is telling Louis that you should stay away from that girl because she's already uh, having the eye on someone. She's already uh, trying to pursue a diamond. Both of them together, they already did their thing. So I, if I were you, I would actually kind of step away from, the, you know, from this and then just focus because I, you don't want your heart broken. And, you know, and that's exactly what he's going to do. You know, he is not going to be pursuing diamond no more. Another thing that 
um, he mentioned on this uh, basketball little match that they had was about a uh, Bonang. So he told him exactly what happened with Bonang. Um, he actually wanted to meet Bonang too. He said that there was an event that he had organized in Namibia and Bonang was supposed to show up. Actually, Bonang showed up. Unfortunately, he forgot to book her a suite. And then Bonang had to go back to South Africa and, you know, pretty much the hotels were booked out and she never got to do what she went there to do. It was really about that. And he also mentioned that it wasn't Bonang's fault. That was his fault. And he actually sent an email to apologize uh, to Bonang about this. Okay. But this is where it gets interesting. Later during the day, he meets up with Bonang, okay? They meet up with Bonang at this, uh, 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 I don't know, soiree or whatever they got, go, they, they plan on that day in the evening. So he comes in and Bonang, the energies were matching really well in the beginning. And, you know, Bonang stood up to hug him and he was like, why are you wearing the wedding band? And he just, he just said that, no, it's just, you know, just for fun and all of that. But then he explains to Bonang, he tells Bonang exactly what happened. And because Bonang wanted to know, like, I heard you were talking this about me. You said this and this and this. And he's like, listen, yes, this is what happened. And Bonang does not recall that. He's like, well, I don't recall that. But anyway, that's fine. As long as it wasn't my fault, you know, I'm always in my bag. I just want to make sure that things don't get misconstrued. And the guy was like, no, it was actually my fault. You came in, da, 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 da. And it is what it is, you know. And I apologize about that. Then it ended there. So he pulls Fantana out from the group. He goes somewhere in a secluded space to speak to Fantana. While he was still talking to Fantana, they start talking shit about him. And I was like, what is this? What are you guys doing? This is crazy that you have people that you might potentially call them your friends, that they just wait for you to leave the table and they're going to start talking shit about you the moment you leave the table. That's exactly what happened. He left the table and then Bonan started saying that, anyway, I don't like him. He talks too much. Why would he say this and this about other people's punanis and all of that? And then he comes back and then that is when he started talking about, uh, no, actually the, the punani situation was brought uh, uh, um, later. And then the diamond conversation was brought up and Louis was trying to coach Fantana, Augusta Fantana, listen, I don't want you to be known as this kind of person. You are here for your music. You're supposed to be known for your career. Bonan jumps in, he's like, who are you to tell Fantana what to do with her punani? You're not supposed to be doing that. You're trying to, you know, slut shame. The conversation got really heated. It got out of hand where Bonang actually called him a liar, uh, a boy from a desert. You know, he, he he's fresh out of the desert and he's already talking shit in her country. It started getting out of hand and I really felt bad for this boy sitting there not knowing what to do. It was really, really sad. And it was at this moment when Bonang realizes that she fucked up and then she stood up and exited the room. And that's how it ended. She was a little bit out of pocket for this confrontation. This was not supposed to escalate to that level. You know, we understand that she's the queen. She's very independent woman. But that does not mean that you have to disrespect. Louis did not disrespect Fantana, okay? If there was a disrespect, that was between him and Fantana. If Fantana says that she's not comfortable with the conversation that she just had with Louis, she can just say it. You know, don't be the voice of Fantana. That conversation actually got a lot of people heated. Zari actually even mentioned that I felt like Bonang has some unresolved issues and then she's lashing out on you. To be honest, she's supposed to be lashing out on the people that she has issues with instead of, you know, overreacting about this situation. And that's how it ended. All right, guys. I'll see you guys with episode four. I gotta go. Peace out.